Thank you for attending today. We're going to discuss virtual desktops. And uh, we're going to first start with talking about the technology a little bit, giving a little bit of a demonstration at the beginning after a couple of introductory slides. And then we're going to go ahead and talk specific to um, how to provide instruction in a lab for students using virtual desktops. So the first thing I'm going to do is give you a little demonstration of cloud computers. So I'm turning on a cloud computer in the front of the room. Uh, we'll talk more about what cloud computers are, but uh, cloud computers are special devices, you're sitting in front of them right, right now, that are used specifically for accessing virtual desktops. Later on we'll talk about labs that don't have cloud computers, how they work with virtual desktops as well. So when you turn on a cloud computer, you'll see in the boot up screen and a uh, little technical screen saying it's getting its address and it's going to come to a login. It's going to ask for my login name and my password. You'll use the same exact login name and password that you use uh, normally from either your PC in your office or, or if you're teaching in a traditional environment. And what I'm going to demonstrate to you is previous to um, coming into the lab, I got my, I, I went ahead and got my desktop ready to teach this course. So I've already had my presentation ready to go. I've already got a couple of documents I'm going to show you minimized on my desktop. And the advantage is a faculty member sitting in the office can go ahead and get ready for a class. And then when they walk into the lab, simply log in and all their applications are ready and they're open and ready to teach. So I use your standard username and password. And the first thing that meant, I get a menu, which is a little different than what you're used to seeing in physical labs. This menu is asking me, which desktop do I want to use? And I'm just going to go ahead and select the first one on the list. We'll talk about that list in a little while. And there is my virtual desktop. And my PowerPoint for this course is all ready to go. I don't have to open it and load it. I have a couple of documents minimized that I can show during this presentation. I'm ready to teach the class. If you'll watch the time on that from a cloud computer lab, it took about 20 seconds for that machine to boot. And after I type my name and my password and select my desktop, about 10 seconds, and I'm ready to teach the class. So one of the advantages, a couple of the advantages of cloud computer labs is number one, um, the speed at which to boot up and log in. And number two, I can prepare, if I'm a faculty member with an office, in my office, and then walk into the computer lab and within seconds, I'm ready to teach the class with all my applications ready to go. Quick little demonstration. So let's get started, see what this is all about. So, Virtual desktops, our tagline for the project, we are where you are. Big key factor of virtual desktops is they follow the student around or the faculty member around. Accessibility, keyword, how do I get access to my software as a student? Where do I have to go? Good example is this first slide. Typical scenario, a student needs to get their homework done. Where's the software I need to do my homework? What time can I get in the room? Which computers is it on? Do I have to go to another campus to get access to this application? It'd be really nice if I had it at home. Very common questions for students in a traditional lab environment. With virtual desktops, here's the vision. Here's where we're moving with this technology. All my software is available to me on my virtual desktop. I can get to it from a lab computer, a library, hallway, I can get to it from any campus. I can access it from the college cafeterias using my own personal laptop. I can be at home using my PC, a coffee shop on my iPad, and still get access to Windows 7 applications. Follows me wherever I go. Accessibility is the key factor. What are we going to talk about today? A little bit about the technology, how it works, what is it all about. 
discuss some of the benefits so you have a solid understanding and can articulate the understanding of the students. Talk about where we're at at Madison College in our virtualization, how, what, what labs are, cloud computers, which programs we've worked with already. What's new for fall semester start for those who have already been participating in our virtual desktop program. Then we'll talk a little bit more in depth about the actual hardware and the client devices that are used. There's different types of virtual desktops. There's student desktops and faculty desktops. And then there's even different kinds of student desktops. We'll see what those are all about. And last but not least, some considerations for assisting your students in cloud when using virtual desktops. So what is virtual desktop technology? Desktops live in the cloud. Common term used a lot nowadays. Basically, the concept is we separate the hardware from the software so that, again, it's not based on who you, where you sit, it's based upon who you are as to which desktops you get access to, not your physical location. The way to accomplish that is separating, again, the hardware from the software. One way I like to explain this is um, that all the hardware, excuse me, all the operating system and software is back in our private cloud, private, in our Madison College data center. The devices in front of the students in cloud computer labs are dumb devices. The ones in front of you in this room, you have a keyboard, a mouse, a screen, no tower, no desktop. Technically in this room, there are no Windows operating systems. There are no applications, there are no hard drives, none of that exists in this room. Just the monitors, mice, and keyboards. And when you log in and select a desktop, it then connects your monitor, keyboard, and screen to a PC in the data center that's running the applications from what you selected from. So think of it this way. I have a stack of PCs in the data center for the accounting program that has all the accounting applications. QuickBooks, Peachtree, ProSeries Tax Software. Beside another stack of PCs for business technology, it has Office 2013 on it. Creative Suite, totally different applications than what are on the accounting desktop. Another stack of desktops for paralegal, another stack for hospitality. Um, that's a good way to visualize it. When you sit at your machine, this cloud computer in front of you, and log in, and as soon as you say, I want to use a specific desktop, and you click on it, it then connects your keyboard, your screen, your mouse to one of the PCs in the stack of desktops that you've selected. Technically, do you think I have a stack of desktops in my data center for accounting and a whole separate stack for paralegal? No. They're great big computers carved up into a whole bunch of Windows 7 mostly Windows 7 computers. We also have Windows 8. And, but conceptually, what we're doing is simply connecting your keyboard, your screen, your mouse to, a pro to the proper PC, which gives you the independence of, I can sit at any hardware device, it's decoupled from the software and the operating system, and then select the proper desktop. Other than that, everything is the same, meaning it's Windows. It's the same applications we use on physical computers, we use them on virtual computers. It's the same QuickBooks, the same Peachtree, same applications. Um, it's just separating that hardware from that software. It's important to understand what we're doing is simply giving the student or the faculty member the right desktop with the right applications. The rest of your world does not change. How you save and where you save your data, it's the same on physical, or virtual desktops. Students can still save and retrieve to their thumb drive. My documents folders are stored on servers out there someplace. They're accessible from any computer, whether it's a physical or a virtual or any virtual. If I use a student virtual desktop, I still get to my home folder. So everything else is the same. Blackboard is the same regardless of where you access it from. Another way I like to envision it is when you hit that menu choice and say, give me the accounting desktop, some little person runs in real quick, throws an accounting PC on your desk and pulls out the other one, and now you've got the right applications. The rest of your world does not change. It's the same. That's when using cloud computers. We'll talk about PCs used to access virtual desktops. Concept is identical. 
However, how you get to your virtual desktop, a couple extra steps. So desktops live in the cloud. Only thing in front of the user, keyboard, screen, and mouse. Applications available based on who they are, who the individual is, not what device they use. And how do we do that? It's based on the program and sometimes right down to the class level of what classes and programs the students are enrolled into. So, for instance, we have a common desktop across all paralegal students. So we have a paralegal desktop. Business technology, we have a common desktop. However, some unique applications require unique configurations or because of licensing considerations, we may have a separate set of desktops even within a program or within a school and maybe even down to the class level. It depends on how it works. I work with all the, we have a lead for each subject area that we identify every course, what applications are used by the course, and based on that information, we determine what desktops we're going to deploy and which software on which desktops. An example, another good example is health education. We have a common desktop that's used by almost every subject area in health education. But the dental area has some special software with unique configurations and unique licensing. So there's a whole separate stack of desktops just for the dental students. And the student can access that one or the health education desktop because they're have entitled access to both. So again, it's based on who they are in students' cases, what programs they're enrolled in. We do this every semester. We, we give access to the students and we remove the access after the semester is over. However, there's special requirements when students may still need access to software when they're not no longer enrolled in programs such as incompletes or maybe they're working on a marketing presentation this semester and they took accounting last semester and they want to include a trial balance in their PowerPoint. Students can still be provided access to desktops that are no longer enrolled uh, for courses no longer enrolled into and that request can be made by a faculty member, a lab coordinator, or a staff member, and we can give students access to desktops that have applications outside of their current enrollments. So automatically, if they're enrolled, they get it. And if for whatever reason students need access to desktops outside of classes, that can be provided. So a little demonstration. I'm going to restart my virtual desktop computer. And I'm going to come up to a login screen again. It's going to take about 15 to 20 seconds to boot up. Got a little message on the screen over here booting. And then pretty soon you'll see part of the boot process on the screen. And I'll be at the same spot you are on your cloud computers in front of you. And as I put in my login name and password, please go ahead and put in your login name and password. And we're all going to get a menu. Okay, I'm the project manager of Virtual Desktop Project. I see every desktop available. So um, just on the screen in front of you, you can see I have employee desktop, a standard desktop, accounting, business technology, our Dentrix dental software desktops, and the list continues on. I'll just scroll down briefly without reading all of them, but a few samples are health education, marketing, paralegal, uh, business technology, um, there's also library, Student Achievement Center, a lot of different virtual desktops, stacks of PCs back in our data center that you can get to any of them from any cloud computer or any Windows computer in the entire district have access to these virtual desktops. So I am going to select, as an example, the Health Education Desktop and pick Connect. All of you have a desktop selection menu, and based upon what courses you teach, and again, based on who the student is, you're going to see different menu choices than I saw on my menu. One of them that's common for everybody is something called standard desktop. A lot of classes don't need any special applications other than Microsoft Office and web browsers. So standard, standard desktop is simply that. It's our standard 
with no unique applications. Probably over 50% of our courses need nothing but the basic Windows, Microsoft Office applications, and access to websites. So standard desktop, think of it as a whole other stack of PCs that everybody, if they have a login account on our network, has access to. If you don't have access to any other desktop, you don't get a menu. You log in with your name and your password, Windows says welcome, 30 seconds later, you have a desktop, you're ready to go. An example of that is last year, fall semester, we went to every Madison College uh, campus, we took out all the hallway computers, we put in all cloud computers in every campus in Madison, and students came to start fall semester, they went to the hallway machines, they typed their name and their password, and if they didn't ha weren't enrolled in any program that used virtual desktops at that point in time, they didn't get a menu, they went right in and they started working. We did no communications to students, no training, no posting, and the semester kicked off just fine in the hallways. Some students did get a menu because they were enrolled in courses. Standard desktop is always at the top of the list, and so if you just hit enter, you're in. They could get to Blackboard, print their schedules, and go off to their classes. So we made it transparent. A lot of technology in the background, simple in the foreground. So I chose Health Education Desktop. So I don't know which one you chose. Pick any one you want to. You're probably going to see different applications on your desktop than I do. Um, health Education has um, applications that are specific to health education. One in particular down here, for instance, is used by physical therapy to print out exercise plans for, 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 for patients, for instance. There's another one, a couple more on here for, for examination software so students can prepare for testing. There's one for respiratory therapy, another one for physical therapy. Just examples of, in this room, I can get access to any of the virtual applications we've done through the whole college, which at this point is over 100 different applications are loaded on virtual desktops. Uh, I'm just going to continue this, this uh, demonstration up here. You feel free to log out whenever you feel, feel like it and go ahead and log back in and select one of the other desktops. And if you go ahead and open up your folders and look at your home folder, you know, your My Documents, you'll see no matter which desktop you use, My Documents is My Documents. No matter which desktop you pick, Blackboard is Blackboard. You go to it the same way. Again, I want to reinforce the concept of virtual desktop technology. We're just placing a desktop in front of you with the right applications, all your shared drive letters, all your things out, uh, outside of that desktop and the rest of the world don't change. Simply the applications that are being presented in front of you. All right. So I'm going to demonstrate that right here. I'm on the Health Education Desktop, which is a desktop for students. Faculty has access to their student desktops for testing purposes. Um, Part-time faculty use the student desktops for delivering instruction. So they are accessible based on who you are again. So as an example, I can get to my same home folder and show you the PowerPoint that I started this course with using a completely different desktop than I started with because my folder structure is still my folder structure. I can go to my home folder and I can navigate through and choose where my documents are at. I can go to my shared folders like my VDI project folder and go to wherever I need to and access wherever app files I need to. So just a demonstration. So let me just go back to our presentation. Already running that on another desktop, that's okay. I'm right back into my presentation. All right. So, again, no matter what desktop you use, you have access to your folders, your files, um, my USB files, etc. All right. 
Let's talk a little bit about the benefits. We're going to do more demonstration a little bit, and then we'll get a lot of hands-on opportunities. Why are we doing this project? Well, we mapped it right to the project to the college mission statement. Accessible, high-quality learning experience. This project is very student-focused. Virtual desktop technology has a lot of opportunities in the college for areas outside of instructional delivery, human resources, um, a number of other areas can benefit from this technology, and we'll get to them right now. Very student-focused, very faculty-focused to meet the goals of the college, accessibility and high quality. Accessibility is the big one. More flexibility where you do your work on and off campus. We'll talk about some remote options that we're going to start to pilot for students coming up this semester. Remember the iPad from the coffee shop. That will become a reality in the not-too-distant future. Um, and higher quality performance. Faculty benefits. We're going to learn about something called an instructional delivery desktop. We're, we'll follow the faculty member to whatever lab they teach from and they can get the consistent desktop with their favorites and their bookmarks and their, their background the way they want it. And again, higher quality. So let's just talk about a few of the benefits briefly. Students' accessibility. We've seen that. Sit at any device, get access to my software anywhere in the college district. Performance. Um, I said these are stacks of PCs in the data center that people can connect to, and the right one for paralegal, one for BT. Well, technically, they're great big computers, and they're very high performance. And so we can provide the performance to the desktop based on the requirements. For a normal desktop running Microsoft Office, for instance, I can allocate a certain amount of CPU, like two processors to it, how much memory I want to give to that desktop, how much disk space. For something like animation applications, I might need to give them four CPUs, and I may need to allocate more memory. So the performance of these desktops is, is, is very superior in some cases to physical PCs because of the hardware in the background that's doing all this. Reliability. All we have in this room are screens, keyboards, and mice. No hard drives, no operating system. That machine over there is not configured differently than this machine over here. It's very reliable. All of everything is controlled in the data center and not out at the desktop itself. Consistency, these virtual desktops in a, in a, stack, of des a stack of PCs, they're identical. Every business technology desktop is identical. Every accounting desktop is identical. However, when students use them, they can make changes to those desktops. They can change the background. Technically, they can install something off the web onto that desktop. When they log out, we throw away all changes and basically give the next user a pristine new desktop. So important, just like in physical labs, when using a virtual desktop, instruct your students, do not save anything to your C drive or your desktop itself because that's all stored on the local computer. Virtual desktops, any changes made to that computer, we throw them away when they log out. However, students still save their documents to their thumb drives or their My Documents folder or wherever they're used to, and they're available at any time. So we throw away changes. That gives us the consistency. Every, every virtual desk does that. And rapid problem resolution. The only reason I would need to visit this lab is to replace a failed monitor, keyboard, or mouse. No moving parts. And if there's something wrong with the operating system or an application, all that can be done centrally in the data center. No longer have to travel to Watertown to fix a Windows operating system that's not behaving properly. Everything's centrally. Very rapid problem resolution. And the beauty of the environment is if I make a change to fix something that's wrong on the paralegal desktop, automatically all the paralegal desktops have that change. In the background, we make it one time, and all common things work with it. The big benefit, students focus on learning instead of technology availability. Benefits for faculty. For full-time faculty, they get their own virtual desktop that is used for instructional delivery in front of classrooms. It's their own, it's private, only they can use it, and they can customize it. When they log out, we don't throw away the changes. So, customizable, can get to it from any lab at any campus. The performance and reliability is, is very, very good. And reduced class readiness time, I demonstrated that at the beginning of this session. I can sit in my office, 
log into my virtual desktop that's out here in the cloud from my PC, get my PowerPoint ready, get my documents ready, and then walk into a lab and go ahead and say connect back to that virtual desktop and I'm ready to teach. In a cloud computer lab, it literally can be less than 60 seconds. And I have my apps open and I'm ready to go. Uh, distance learning support. What we're doing, one of the new things we're doing this fall is we're, we're, we're piloting, actually delivering the student, the desktop with the applications on them to their house. We're doing it with our paralegal program as, a, as our first um, online classes that's using all the applications for a particular subject area. And um, so it's really going to enhance a lot of distance learning opportunities. And I'll talk more again about that later on. And again, rapid problem resolution for faculty. Allows faculty to focus on instructional delivery instead of technology. Last but not least, I'll go through here relatively quick. We're expecting when this is over and done with to reduce hardware, software costs, and support costs in our desktop infrastructure by up to 50%. Cut the costs in half is our goal. Improve service delivery for all the reasons we talked about, the student satisfaction. Reduce downtime. In front of you, very few part, things can go wrong. In our data center, we have a lot of redundancy. So as few single points of failure as possible. Um, improved regional support. Up until now, you know, a regional campus may not have had a whole lot of applications. So if a student was enrolled in a course at, at Truex here at the main campus and used a special software, maybe they lived in Portage, they may have to come all the way down here in order to get access to the software. Now a student enrolled in class here can go to the nearest campus and get to their applications. It'll increase productivity and for the, for the community, our students are using state-of-the-art technology. They'll be familiar with virtual desktop concepts when they go into the workforce and reduced energy consumption. These devices in front of you use less than 5% of the power that a standard PC would use in the same room. Where are we at right now? Well, we have cloud computers deployed in quite a few places, 800 of them right now uh, deployed out there in a lot of different structural delivery labs. So a lot of marketing classes, I, with the parentheses is where, where some of these programs commonly teach. Um, uh, so marketing, we have a few labs that we converted and you can see a whole list of them that we've deployed cloud computers into. Open and program specific labs. Um, so open labs where students can just go into to do their homework, we've converted quite a few of them. All libraries district-wide, we just did this this summer, we deployed 300 cloud computers to all the, all the libraries across the district. Very rapid boot up time, very rapid execution time. All of our student achievement centers in, in our regionals are cloud computers. And hallway computers at all of our Madison locations. We've done a lot of work with a lot of different programs. This is by no means all-inclusive. Uh, we've done a lot of marketing, small business, fashion, paralegal accounting. I'm not going to read them all to you. As part of our Student Achievement Center, we worked with some of the arts and sciences areas, biology, mathematics, etc. What's new for fall semester? Well, one of the beauties of uh, virtual desktop technology is our flexibility in software versions we can deliver to the same labs. So business technology and marketing are going to be in office 2013 this fall semester. All the other programs are remaining on 2010. Uh, they have to get their course material ready, learn the applications. Now, no matter who walks into the lab, what class, I can deliver the 2013 office to those students and 2010 to the other students based on their login ID and what desktop they pick. Same with the operating system itself. We've had Windows 8 on virtual desktops. So students enrolled in a Windows 8 class get a Windows 8 desktop. Those in Windows 7 classes get Windows 7. We're opening up to teaching virtual desktops in both cloud computer labs, which is how we've been doing up until now, to also include teaching virtual desktops from physical labs so that entire programs can go virtual, such as business technology, accounting, and a few other ones. All courses delivered this fall for some programs will be via virtual desktops, regardless if they're in a physical computer lab or a cloud computer lab, 
like we're here right now. I'm going to take this opportunity to do another demonstration. How do I get to my virtual desktops from my PC in my office or in a lab that's physical computers when I don't have cloud computers? So I'm going to leave this presentation. Uh, I'm going to switch the screen over to my laptop instead of the cloud computer to demonstrate how this works. So this is now a screen for my laptop. I booted up my laptop and I just logged into it as normal. I'm not doing anything unique yet. And now let's just pretend I'm a faculty member in my office and I want to get ready for the class. It could just be the same as in front of the classroom or a student sitting at a regular PC. To get to virtual desktops from a physical machine, you need to run a piece of software that lets you get out there to the virtual desktops. That software is from a company called VMware, which, which their, their products are part of our infrastructure, and it's called the View Client. It's right here on every Windows 7 desktop in the district. VMware View Client. It's a, it's a circle with two squares for an icon, and that software lets me get from a physical machine to my virtual desktops. If you're sitting at a cloud computer like here, you won't see that icon. You don't need it. You turn on your cloud computer, you log in, you're using your virtual desktop. That's all cloud computers work with, is virtual desktops. But if I'm in another lab that has physical computers, maybe Office 2010 on them, and I'm teaching business technology class, which is Office 2013, how do I do it? You and your students would pick this icon, and it pops up with a list of desktops available just like you said at the cloud computer and listed and, and logged in and gave a list of desktops the same list it assumes you are the student who logged into that physical machine is the same user who's going to use the virtual desktop so i don't ask you for your name and your password again it flashed by real quick and i'm ready to select the set of desktops so i'm just going to go ahead and select the first one on the list well, actually, I'll... and it's going to connect me to that desktop. And whatever's on the screen for my, again, I may have been a faculty member in my office. I can set it up, and it's all ready to go. So here's my virtual desktop now. I can tell that by the status bar at the top of the screen. Using a virtual desktop for your physical PC, there'll be a status bar. That way you know you're working on your virtual desktop and which one you are working on. Let me demonstrate something to you. You'll find this interesting. Many of you are familiar with the minimize, maximize, close buttons at the top of every Windows application. I'm going to select and get out of full screen mode. And look at here. Your virtual desktop when you're on a physical PC is nothing more than a window on your physical PC. So the VMware View application, that, that client, access virtual desktops, and then it just becomes a window on that machine. Normally when you're doing instructional delivery with students, you're just going to leave that in full screen mode, and you're going to use it just like a regular computer. Technically, I'm running two computers right now, though my physical computer and my virtual sitting back in the data center. That's why there's two screens. My virtual just accessing it from my physical. So right now, as I'm accessing this, that laptop's pretty dumb again. It's just my keyboard, my screen, and my mouse. It doesn't matter how much memory I have in it, how much CPU I have in it, my virtual desktop's doing all the work for me. But I can use my physical computer technically at the same time. So very easy to use. Um, and uh, for brand instructional delivery, I can get to, again, any virtual desktop from any Windows machine in the district. But students are going to do a couple things wrong here, so I just want to point out a few things to you. As supporting your students answering questions, you all receive a document for assisting your students in virtual labs, uh, for virtual desktops, I should say. And cloud computers, Pretty simple. You log in, you pick a desktop, you have no status bar, you just use them like a PC. Well, on a physical computer like we're doing up in front, there's a couple things to be aware of. Number one, students can do a few things wrong. 
A, they forget to click on the icon in the first place. And they're going to say, where's my Office 2013? Where's my Word? Well, you'll, one of the keys is, is you need to make sure that they're using their virtual desktop. The other thing they'll do is they'll minimize. Oh, my applications are gone. I see Office 2010 now. Well, they minimize their virtual desktop. So you have them pull it back up in the status bar. Another thing students may do wrong is hit the X to close it. It's going to say, are you sure you want to disconnect? Say yes, boom, goes away. I'll do it. And they're back to the physical PC again. You don't see the status bar, you instruct the student, simply hit your view icon and select your desktop again and you go right back in. Let me choose a student desktop this time. I'll just go down here and pick um, Health Education again. And I'm right back to where I left off at on the virtual desktop. So those are a couple things students can do wrong. And then you do need to be aware of one more thing when you teach in physical labs using virtual desktops is USB devices. That would be thumb drives, headsets, other USB devices. Uh, on, when you're using physical computers, there's a consideration. Cloud computers, just plug them in. And the thumb drive is accessible. The headphones will work. Physical computers, well remember I said technically we're using two different computers. My local laptop, and back in the data center, I'm using my virtual desktop. Well, the USB stick isn't too bright either. It can only work with one computer at a time, or a headphone, one computer at a time. So when you insert a USB stick or a headset or whatever into a physical PC, the, physical, the system assumes the physical PC is going to use that device. So only the physical PC will see the USB stick. If a student puts it into a PC, again, when they're running a virtual desktop and then tries to access that thumb drive, it's going to appear like it doesn't exist. Very, very simple. What the student needs to do and what you need to instruct them for is at the, stop, at the top of this status bar where I'll show you minimize, maximize, there's a choice called connect USB device. And when you select that choice, it's going to give you a list of whatever's plugged into that computer. And you select it and say, connect that USB device to my virtual desktop. And I think the only thing I've got connected here is a camera. Click it too many times and it's closing it up, is what I'm doing. There you go. Of course, during a demonstration, something always fails to run. But it would pull down a list of devices that are available on it. I don't have a USB stick plugged in here, my apologies. Um, so it pulls down a list of devices, you select the device, and it becomes available within 60 seconds. So that's probably the thing that's going to. Um, from teaching in physical labs that you need to be aware of is USB devices by default work with a physical desktop. You need to select the connect to USB in order to use USB devices on the virtual desktop. And basically what it does is the USB goes ahead and disassociates itself from the PC in front of the student and connects it to their virtual desktop. And it's just like a device physically attached back in the data center. All right. I'm going to go ahead now and switch back to my cloud computer.
select my desktop once again. All right. Let's continue our presentation. So we've gone through the benefits and talked about there and talked about new semester virtual desktop instruction in both cloud computer labs as well as physical computer labs. Another thing we're doing this semester is paralegal online classes using virtual desktops. We hope to extend that further in spring semester. And another exciting thing we're doing starting the first day of semester, which is Monday, is student access to virtual desktops. Before it was strictly related, uh, strictly accessed from cloud computers in the district. Now students can access virtual desktops from either cloud computers or any Windows 7 computer in the district. Thus again, being able to teach virtual desktops in physical labs. Really exciting, from student personally owned Windows devices via wireless on campuses district wide. So a student will be able to bring their Windows, Windows laptop, sit in the cafeteria, and access the virtual desktops with the applications for their program on them. Very, very nice. Now I will say there are some limitations to that in that there are some applications that we're only licensed to use on Madison College owned devices that we are not licensed for student devices. Um, Windows can be used on our student devices and the Microsoft Office products. An example of, of applications that we're not licensed for for students is the Adobe products, um, Creative Suite, Photoshop, etc. So if a student accesses a like business technology desktop, it has Office 2013 and Adobe Creative Suite. If they access that from their student-owned device, they'll only be able to get to the Microsoft applications. The menu choices and the icons for Adobe will not be available. All right, most of the rest of the um, uh, presentation. You've covered a lot of this already. You've learned about cloud computer, desktop computer, and mobile device support. Not just Windows laptops, but iPads, iPhones. We're sometime this fall, we haven't announced the exact date yet, provide access to both faculty and students from personal devices such as iPads, Android tablets, etc. So again, student virtual desktops. We have faculty instructional delivery desktops. What's that for? It's for in front of the room. Each fac full-time faculty member gets their own virtual desktop for classroom delivery. And they can customize it, etc. We have some special ones for staff, for our events group for guests, some very application specific. And then we have remote access for faculty and staff for online classes and soon, this fall, We'll be offering some remote access for, for students not in online classes for casual use. We'll be announcing that later on. Students have their lab pools. We've talked about most of that. Access to virtual desktops. They're identical. Windows 7, any changes they make are non-persistent. When they log out, all those changes go away. They have administrator rights. And they're available while in the lab. Technically, here's all the different applications on our standard desktop, on all of our desktops. Um, and then, roaming desktops are also available to students when they're outside the lab, in the hallways, from their personal devices. Similar characteristics. Used by students outside the labs, everything is the same. Um, however, they're limited. First come, first serve. Um, some, because of licensing considerations, there's only a limited number of these desktops. Um, and some applications, again, may not be available based on licensing. Faculty has their own instructional delivery desktops. Used by faculty in front of labs. All applications required for what they teach. It's not shared with anyone else. And each one, any changes they make, persist. Staff, I'm not going to cover that much, doing very little staff. However, we are doing a few virtual desktops, project focused at students and faculty. Last but not least, remember USBs, they must connect. 
One limitation right now is USB 3.0 ports. These are the new types of computers that are now shipping with these faster USB ports. Very few of them out there yet. However, VMware still needs to modify that client software to work with USB 3.0 ports. They're either blue or they're labeled SS for super speed. Um, so you need to plug in, students need to plug in. We don't have any of the regional colleges, or just a few of these in our high-end labs. Faculty need to set up their printing. We give the link from their faculty instructional delivery desktops. Students will default to printing in whatever lab they're in. There's no CD-ROM drives. A few of the models don't have speakers in labs, but typically we don't want speakers in labs. And the key, plan ahead with technology services for any new applications so you can test them and make sure they're going to work um, in time for your courses for virtual desktops. Last but not least, we talk about students have access to desktops based on what classes they're in. And again, all students and faculty have access to standard desktop. Students will be entitled to their program desktops as soon as they walk into class unless they have not activated their account or they're on a wait list. And it can take up to a system an hour for the system to entitle after they activate their account. Last but not least, again, if somebody needs to finish an incomplete or needs uh, access to a desktop they used to have access to for another course, um, to do work for another course, any faculty member or lab coordinator can call the help desk and give students access to a virtual desktop. I'd like to thank you for coming today. That's the end of our presentation.